Okay, I've been wanting to make this video for a long time. I just never really had the time to do it. Um, it's one of the most generic things that you do in Photoshop. Uh, the first thing everybody wants to do in Photoshop is put somebody else's head on somebody else's body. And uh, there's you know a lot of ways that it can be achieved. A lot of people just do the basic cut out and just put it on there and hope it looks good. But you can really make these things look pretty realistic if you put some time into it. And I'm just going to show you a couple of the techniques that I use to do it. So I'm going to take this Indian guy here. I'm going to use this picture of my uncle, and I'm going to stick him on that, uh, you know, this guy's head. So the first thing you obviously need to do is cut out the head of the person that you want to put on the other person's body. To do this, I use the pen tool and just create a generic selection around the head. Now, some instances, the hair is going to be important, um, but really, for, you know, my purposes of blending somebody into another person, you want to use the other person's hair. And, and just stick the person's face on that person's body. It kind of looks cool that way. So we're going to make a generic selection. I'm not going to be too accurate here. Um, and I'm just going to draw a path around this head. The important features you really want to pay attention to are maybe the ears. Another thing I should have mentioned is the, pers the picture you want to start cutting out, it's best to have a really high resolution picture because you could zoom in on it and make pretty precise selections if you need to without it being all blurred out. So really the trick is get a nice, you know, a digital camera. Usually we'll start you with something, you know, by default with a huge resolution. And uh, that's the way it really should be. So making this selection. Again, these are all going to be, you know, these are going to be faded into the other picture. So really it's not super important, but you want to get the generic line going to match. And I usually will cut off at the neck don't need anything else. The neck can be a pretty basic selection also. So you're creating the pen tool path around here. There's a lot of different ways to make selections. For me, this is the most easiest. I have a uh, pen tablet, and it's just really easy to, dr to draw with or to, to make these lines. But you can also do it with masking or, you know, the magic wand tool if you want a really ugly selection. Uh, lasso tool for an even uglier selection. I'm going to try and speed through this video here because unfortunately YouTube gives you 10 minutes and when I turn this into an HD file, the file is huge if it's a long video so it takes a lot of time to upload and so I'm trying to get this done as quick as possible. Okay, we closed off the path. Again, it's, it's inaccurate at the top. It really doesn't matter. So to turn this into a selection, go to Paths tab under your Layers palette here. You, on a, I believe on a PC it's Alt-Click but on an Apple key it's Command-Click this here and it turns into a path. Now the picture I'm turning, transferring this over to is a lot smaller than this resolution wise so you really want to transform this thing down. Uh, give it a small size. So there's his head and you're going to select your selection, your move tool and you're going to move it into your other picture. Okay now it's a little bit smaller. I'm going to resize this. Kind of want to make this the same you know generic you know, pat, the, the way this guy's looking, you kind of want to match that up. You can do, you know, zoom up, go into your layers palette, lower the opacity of the of the thing you put in to kind of match the features. That's really, that's going to give you, in the end, the most realistic look is when the features are kind of lined up here. Uh, it's a little too opaque, I can't really see. Uh, again, I'm trying to make this look as realistic as possible, so... I'd say probably right there is good. You're covering the main features. We're going to blend his neck together, the ear. We're going to end up using the Arabic guy's ear. I think that might be a little too low on his head, though. All right, well, we'll try this and see what happens. So you're going to make this you know, back to 100%. Hit Enter to get out of your transform mode. And there you go. Well, i got to move this over a little bit. Okay, that's kind of, that's kind of good right there. All right, now... After you've you know moved this in here, what you want to do is apply a layer mask to your layer uh, of the new head. So in order to do that, you click this little button here. It puts on a layer mask. Now layer masks you can do a lot of research on. They're they're pretty easy to understand. Black means that it's going to remove uh, from the image. White means that it's going to add. So we want this set on white on black. And we're going to take a brush. And now a really good trick is to take a huge brush with a soft hardness set setting. Make it zero percent. That's going to give you a nice fade. It's going to make the blend look more realistic. So you have your color set to black, and you start on the mask, and you start painting away you know, the, the new head. 
and you see what I'm saying with the brush it really fades in it, it doesn't give you these harsh lines so you might have to clean it up a little bit but overall this is going to be a good a good tool to use for this we're going to try and remove his ear here and we're going to go with the Indian guy's ear Arabic, I don't know what this guy is, his hairline and the neck now the neck should blend pretty well And you kind of want to just remove yeah, all the, you know, you want to make it look as realistic as possible. So remove as much from the um, uh, from the new head as, as possible with keeping a lot of the old features in there. See, now you can see this is faded. You can see up here his skin's still over there. That's where you're going to select a smaller brush. Maybe try 21 for this. Oh, and I got the wrong color set. Back to black. All right, and now you see there's no fade here anymore. It kind of gives you this rough, tight, not rough, this really tight line. All right, so now his his head is it's kind of blended in here pretty well. Uh, and we want to get rid of this little spot down here. I'm going to go back to a bigger brush for this neck to finish it up, maybe a 45. I'm going to kind of keep this necklace thing going here. You see, this, this is pretty good, but I could have moved this a little bit better. I could have positioned his head a little bit better. But I think, for all intents and purposes, for this video, this should pretty much work. Okay, now you got the guy's head. It, it fits in there, but his skin color, totally wrong. Not the right skin color. So what do we need to do about that? You can add layers to this and play with the different layer blend modes to kind of make the skin match. I'm really not happy with this chin down here. This is kind of too faded and his neck doesn't look right but again for this video I'm just kind of showing you basics and you just want to make sure the head is as close as possible you can see I'm switching back and forth for colors from black and white to add and remove to the mask all right I'm gonna be satisfied with this I suppose not really but I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to I kind of want to make his chin a little bit rougher. I mean, you need a nice tight edge. All right. So now we're going to try and blend his skin together to match this. So you're going to create a new layer above that layer mask. And you're going to take the eyedropper tool. And you just kind of want to click somewhere on his skin to get that basic brown color. So we've got that. And I'm going to go back to a brush tool. And we're going to set the layers blend mode. We'll start first with color. See how that looks when you start painting on there. Okay, it's kind of blends pretty good, so it's going to need to be darkened up a little bit, maybe. Alright, I'm just going to paint on the guy's face and try, and try and get as even as possible, zoom in where needed. I'm going to change your brush size. And just the main things you don't want to do is paint over the whites of the eyes. You want to keep the color kind of the same, but really you can paint into the eyebrows. Actually, forget that. You can't paint into the eyebrows. That one, this color, it doesn't look right. We're going to change that later, but I'm going to paint around the eyebrows for this guy. And his nose. And even inside the cavity there, you can paint that. From far away, it's going to look okay. So I'm going to get as tight of a paint you know, into the lines as you can. This is where all the coloring as a kid pays off, trying to stay in the lines. You can even paint over his ear because you want it to match. You really want the complexion to match what you just painted. Alright, and his lips actually can probably... Nah, again, we have to darken him up with a different color. I'm going to move down here, do his neck. Now what I would do is even paint on top of the other, the original's color. Even though you're not going to notice that much of a difference, it's going to look similar, but it kind of blends more towards the face now that the colors are exact. You can see the fade here still from when I 